Okay, so let's take, for example, CH3, CH3. And does anybody know what this is going to be called? Ethane, right? You guys, methane is one carbon, ethane is two carbons, okay? Well, hey, let's see what this looks like. And ethane is going to have one CH3 bond, another CH3, just like that. And hey, this compound also has as many hydrogens attached per carbon as possible. It is a saturated hydrocarbon. But don't take my word for it, you guys. Does anybody think that there are not as many hydrogens attached to these two carbons as possible? Like, could we stick another H onto either of these two carbons? No, we couldn't, right, you guys? Because those carbons already have four bonds to them. One, two, three, four bonds to that carbon. One, two, three, four bonds to that carbon, right? And that's the max. But hey, a lot of people get confused by this because they're like, okay, well, just a second ago with methane, we said that the max number of hydrogens attached to that carbon was four. And these carbons on ethane now are only have three hydrogens attached, but we still consider them to be saturated? What's up with that? And so, hey, let me refine the definition of a saturated hydrocarbon a bit. A saturated hydrocarbon is a compound that has as many hydrogens attached as possible for the number of carbons present. So in this case, we have a compound with one, two carbons. Of course, each carbon is capable of making four bonds, and so it seems like each carbon should be able to bond with four hydrogens. But remember that one of those bonds has to be used con to connect the two carbons. So there are still as many hydrogens attached to these two carbons as possible, given that the car carbons have to be connected to each other. But hey, if you don't believe me that this is a saturated hydrocarbon, that this is an alkane, let's use the general formula of an alkane one more time to double check this guy. Okay, so number of carbons in this case equals two, right? One, two carbons. So theoretically, the max number of hydrogens attached according to our formula is going to be number of hydrogens equals 2 times n number of carbons, which is 2 in this case, so 2 times 2 plus 2, and 2 times 2 is 4, plus 2 equals 6. So what this is saying is, is that if this is indeed a saturated hydrocarbon, if this is an alkane, then we should have 6 hydrogens for this 2 carbon compound. And do we? Yeah, right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six hydrogens, this guy checks out. This compound is saturated. It is an alkane, okay? Okay, so defining an alkane as a saturated hydrocarbon with general formula CnH2n plus 2 really doesn't mean much until you compare it to hydrocarbons that are unsaturated, that don't have as many H's attached to the carbons as possible. And that's why we define alkanes like this. It's so we can compare them to unsaturated hydrocarbons like alkenes and alkynes, okay? So let me go ahead and erase this and we'll get into that. Okay, so question you guys. Why define alkanes like this as saturated hydrocarbons? It's so we can compare and distinguish them from unsaturated hydrocarbons like alkenes and alkynes. Okay, let's write that down. Okay, so the question is, why define alkanes like this as saturated hydrocarbons? And the answer is, so we can compare them to unsaturated hydrocarbons. Unsaturated hydrocarbons, like alkenes and alkynes, okay? 
So the reason we define alkanes as saturated hydrocarbons is because we want to be able to distinguish alkanes from other carbon compounds, ones that don't have the max number of hydrogens attached. And we call these unsaturated hydrocarbons. And unsaturated hydrocarbons come in two forms, alkenes and alkynes. Let me write those down for you. So these come in two forms. Alkenes and alkynes. Okay, so let's see what these unsaturated hydrocarbons look like. And let's start out with an example of an alkene first. Okay, so hey, let's take, for example, CH2, CH2. And this looks like this. You're going to have a C double bonded to another C with two hydrogens coming off each carbon. All right, so let me ask you, is this an alkane, you guys? Is this a saturated hydrocarbon? Are there as many hydrogens attached to these two carbons as possible? No, right? Because we just saw a second ago that for a two carbon compound for ethane, which looked like this, And there were three hydrogens on each carbon for ethane. One, two, three for this carbon. One, two, three for this carbon. On this guy, we only have two hydrogens for each carbon. One, two for this carbon. One, two for this carbon. So, hey, we're actually missing this hydrogen and this hydrogen on this guy, right? And because this compound is missing two hydrogens, it is considered to have one unit of unsaturation. For every two missing hydrogens, this is equal to one unit of unsaturation. And let's go ahead and write that down. For every two missing hydrogens, for every two missing hydrogens, this is equal to one unit of unsaturation. But hey, you guys, even though this compound is missing two hydrogens on it, all these atoms still have octets, right? So what took the place of these two missing hydrogens on this compound? This double bond. So in this compound, this double bond substituted for these two missing hydrogens, allowing all atoms in this compound to have an octet. And what this means is that for every multiple bond you see in a compound, that's equal to one unit of unsaturation because each multiple bond you have takes the place of two missing hydrogens, all right? So, hey, you guys, if your teacher asks you to look for units of unsaturation and you're too lazy to count the number of H's, all you got to do is check how many multiple bonds you have in your compound. For every multiple bond, that is equal to one unit of unsaturation. Oh, and hey, you guys, in case you forgot, a multiple bond is just any additional bonds on top of the initial single bond. So remember that single bonds are the initial bond between two atoms. For example, take this carbon and this carbon, bonded together by a single bond. Anything you have in addition to that, any bonds in addition to that, are considered multiple bonds. So if you put a double bond there, you'll have one single bond and one multiple bond, okay? So this would be considered to have one unit of unsaturation. If you went as far as to put a triple bond here, this would be considered one single bond and two multiple bonds. So that would be considered to have two units of unsaturation, all right? But hey, you guys, just to prove to you that this compound is in fact unsaturated, that it is missing hydrogens, let's use the alkane general formula to double check because the formula will tell us the max number of hydrogens this two carbon compound should have to be saturated. And if we compare it to the number of hydrogens we actually have on this compound, it should be less. Okay, so let me erase this real quick.